Today we're gonna sketch an idea, photo bash it, and then color grade everything. Hey there, my name is Ali and today we have this sketch here and we need to transform it into real image. Okay, basically this sketch is all about we have a plane here, then we have these two mountains like the closest to the camera, then as we go further, the mountains go further away. So let's group all these layers together like that and just give them some color and I'll call it the idea. Okay, this is our idea. It's time to transform it into reality. The first thing we need to do is the plane or the ground we have here. I got that photo for it here. Uh, this one I'm gonna use actually. So I'm gonna pull it just in a different window. Then I'm gonna grab it and put it on top of everything here. So it's in full size. It's like it's taking its whole size. Let's put it in the middle and let's like stretch it down a little bit, something like that. Let's actually, I'm gonna delete this group, the group only. So I need to know where I should put it. It's here, I guess, because this is the like, wait, let me see. Okay, this mountain, I need it to be below everything. Yeah, except these two mountains, it should be on top of them. Yeah, something like that. Then I'm gonna mask it. I'm gonna take the gradient, make sure the color is black. And on the first, first one here, I'm gonna just delete its top part. So it's something like that. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl T and stretch it down a little bit. Maybe make it smaller. Something like that. I need it to be like matching the horizon line. Okay, good now. Uh, let's try this. This is better, I guess. And you can always try like holding Control and Alt and you either making it this way or that way. But both don't work, so I'm gonna just leave it like that. Okay, let's put the amount in here. Okay, now we need to add the mountains. So how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna jump again that here it's like I took it some sort of a challenge I'm using a very like weird photo this one and I'm gonna make it work with mountains so like recently I'm like practicing painting so I'm trying to use photos that don't really match and I'm trying to make them match so I'm gonna press apply layer mask you'll understand what I'm trying to say I'm gonna pull this one here Okay, and then I want to transform this photo to look like a mountain. This is like the challenge I'm trying to make. So let's start with, with that mountain. So I'm going to press Ctrl click. Now I have a selection over the mountain. I'll stand on the layer and I'm going to add layer mask. And then I'm going to unlink it. Take this one. Now I can move it freely inside the selection I have. So I'm going to make it like that. And then I'm gonna warp it and I'm gonna try to pull it something like that and pull it from down. I want it to look like a mountain when it's actually not a real mountain. So this is like the challenge. And I'm also gonna use this photo in the rest of the whole image. Something like that is good. And then I'm gonna control T again and maybe make it bigger. From the sides and bigger from everything rotate it a little bit move it now we need to get rid of these houses so i'm gonna take the clone stamp and i'm gonna hold alt click and then i'm gonna clone stamp away the houses it's easier if you use actually a real mountain photo it would be way easier than using something like that and like trying to fix it. But for me, it's some sort of a challenge because I'm practicing how to paint. 
Okay. And now I need to get rid of this one below of it. This was my guide, this one, which I drew. So I don't need it anymore because I have this one. Okay. I'm not gonna fix anything now. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And after I add all the mountains, I'm gonna start like fixing them. Okay. Let's drag the second one now. We're gonna do the same. I'm gonna take this one, put it on top of it. Open it, control click, and then add layer mask, and then close this one. I don't need it anymore. And then unlink it, take the layer. Now I can move freely inside. So I can make it smaller, something like that. And then I can warp it. Something like that. Okay, we're still gonna fix everything, just like, if it doesn't look natural yet, it's okay. Then I'm gonna do the same with all the layers I have. Let's make it smaller first, let's rotate it, something like that. Warp it, it doesn't matter if you do that before or after. It's a little bit slow here, but just let close it, control click this one to find it. It's here, so control click to make a selection, then mask, then close the one below, then unlink it, and then move it until it looks best in your mountain. If you have anything you want to get rid of, just clone stamp it away. Okay. Now that's the second one. I'm going to link it. Okay. This one. I'm going to do the same. And warp it. Then I'm gonna press Ctrl click and mask it, unlink it, move it until it looks best, and then close the one below of it. Okay, and then these final two. The best thing about that technique actually is that it likes allows you to be more creative because you're limited with photos that don't look how you want, but then you you like force them to look how you want them to. So this helps you a lot actually. Okay, and then the last one here. And let's close it. Okay, I need to make sure it's filling the whole mask I drawn. Okay, now we have our mountains. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. But they look like, uh, of course, the, the, it looks uh, like fake. Very fake. Uh, let me first add the sky, but actually. I'm going to use that sky. I wanted it to be like some sort of blue environment. So I chose that sky. I'm going to put it below everything here. Okay, I'm gonna rasterize it. So that it goes faster because I'm recording. Everything is really slow now. Yeah, I just need some sort of a sky which is cloudy. Something like that. Or like we can call it foggy. Okay. Now it's time to try to fix these mountains. Okay, let's start from the one further back. And then we will get closer. Okay, the, fir the first thing is that when you, get, when you go further back from the camera, you reduce contrast and color. So I'm going to go to brightness and contrast and reduce the contrast a lot. You see it's affecting this one. Make it brighter because it's near the bright parts. And then I'm going to go to hue saturation and desaturate it. Something like that. And last thing, I'm going to go to a curves adjustment layer and I'm going to just like fade it heavily, something like that. Okay, we're still going to fix it more, but for now it's fine. I'm going to actually copy these three and put them on top of this one. 
link them so I don't have to do them all over again and then maybe in the color I'm not gonna like I'm gonna bring back some color and in the fading I'm gonna unfade a little bit okay let's copy these three and let's pull them on top of that one make sure they are linked so they don't affect the whole photo now they are affecting this one let's reduce this one reduce a little bit of the effects I can actually just reduce the opacity instead of reducing the effects the, themselves and we have this one now let's go to curves adjustment layer make sure it's linked below brighten up darken a little bit this is like removing some contrast and I'm not gonna like remove any of the colors I'm just gonna leave it this way and then this one I'm also gonna do the same a little bit of fading and the main one here also I'm gonna fade it a little bit yes something like that so now it's a little bit better let's fade the one back a little bit more we still have a problem with the colors actually <coughs> I'm gonna try something out. I'm gonna try to color balance them to blue a little bit. Let's try copying this color balance into all of them. Because they are like too yellowish. So adding some blue will help a little bit. I don't want it to be yellow because the background is not sunny. It's more yellow. Okay. The second thing I'm gonna do is, to everyone, I'm gonna start doing some dodging and burning. This is like the hardest part. I have here some cracked brushes, so I'm gonna use any of them, doesn't matter. And on the burn tool, with a, like a decent exposure. Okay, I'm on this one now. I'm gonna just like, add some texture. I'm burning a little bit, something like that. And maybe I'm gonna use like any brush I have, something like that, to burn a little bit of the areas. The light is coming from the middle here, so I'm gonna burn the places away from the light. And maybe I'll burn this area a lot, so it looks like it's going in, it's like deep. And then I'm gonna hold Alt, if you hold Alt it does the opposite, it dodge instead of burning. So you can brighten up areas by holding Alt and you can darken areas by removing Alt. So now I'm brightening the edges because the edges is close to the light source. So I'm brightening all the edges. Like that, okay. So now we created some sort of like texture. Let's do the same with this one. Okay, burning. I need the crack brush, any crack brush to add some, te some texture to. and let's try to make something like there's a hole in this mountain if I darken an area a lot, something strong like that it will make it look like there is like some sort of a hole in the mountain let's try making it something like that I'm just like playing around trying to see my painting skills if I can like change how something look like to make it look something else by over painting on it let's darken this area so now it looks like it's like this part is deep inside and this one is shallow okay let's take this brush you can actually just use any like circle normal brush I'll use this one now I'm holding alt so I'm dodging I'm dodging the edges making them bright And then I'm gonna burn these parts away from the light. Yes, something like that. And here in these areas, we need actually to like dodge a little bit and zoom in and like fix them. Dodge and burn. And especially in these areas, you must do some dodging and burning. So they look more real because it looks too flat actually.
you can always burn the shadow if you want to like fade it we're still gonna do more dodging and burning with a different technique but this is like a first first layer okay let's see this one let's do the same dodging and burning let's take the crack brush start playing around a little bit something like that make sure it's on like mid tones so it doesn't go too dark yes and then we take this one let's dodge the edges and burn the middle parts or the parts like far away from the light okay let's do the same let's not skip this one first i'm gonna dodge sorry hold alt dodge the edges and burn the rest and some like cracks to add texture you can rotate it around so it doesn't look repetitive try using a big one maybe sometimes small one this is just to add like some sort of a texture and then on a certain area i'm gonna hold a lot of clicks i keep pressing click until it's completely black so we added some sort of like breaks in the rocks or something like that okay let's take this one also i'm going really fast i know but this is for the sake of the tutorial so it's a little bit like faster you can take your time to make it more accurate okay let's now dodge the edges yeah something like that okay and now the last one here i'm gonna dodge the edges i'm holding alt when i'm dodging now i leave alt and then i press only click so now i'm burning the other parts okay so now we created some sort of depth uh, this one needs more fading it looks close to the camera so i'm gonna add a curves adjustment layer fade it a little bit this one also curves adjustment layer fade it a little bit and this one the two at the back i'm gonna fade them even more fade them and maybe reduce this one a little bit and this one what i'm doing is i'm taking the dark points making them brighter and then the very bright points making them a little bit darker so it looks realistic because when you go away from the camera this happens okay this one is too colorful i believe I'm gonna go to hue saturation. I'm gonna desaturate it a little bit. Same for this one. Hue saturation, desaturate it a little bit. And then one more thing. This one, if you compare this color with that one, this one is more reddish orange. This one is more yellowish greenish. So I'm gonna fix this one. I'm gonna go to hue saturation. Let's see from the orange yellowish and the green yellowish, we move from the left to the right. So I'm gonna move this one from the left the right a little bit so now the colors are matching i'll just desaturate it a little bit now this one color the color of this one is matching this one okay okay now i'm gonna take a cloud br cloud brush i have this one here it's a cloud brush i'm gonna pick any color like a very light blue color something like that let's take a very light blue color something here and then i'm gonna add some fog Okay, the first thing, I'm going to take this layer, or no, the one behind of it, I'm going to add a layer on top of it, and then I'm going to just, let me pick the color again, I don't know where it went, yeah, something like that, and I'm just going to add some fog, but this is too strong, so I'm going to use a low opacity, and I'm just going to add some fog here and there, okay, what if we unlinked it, it's going to be better, Okay, I'm gonna give it a red symbol, the fog. So I do it like if I wanna find them anytime, I'm gonna find them. Let's give it also a red symbol. Now it's on top of this one at the back. The fog. It's important to do this like the fog thingy because it shows you the difference between this layer and that layer. Okay, and let's take this one. Create a layer on top of it using a brush start adding some fog here and there okay and let's take the one layer okay i forgot to make it red so i can find it let's take this last layer 
create a new layer on top of it and add some fog on top of everything okay now we need to like still fix it a little bit uh, the contrast is too strong actually I need to decontrast the whole image uh, like I believe the whole image is too contrasty so I'm gonna go to brightness and contrast and just lower the contrast of everything okay that's much better I can also go to a curves adjustment layer darken everything and brighten the blacks darken the whites okay and then individually I'm gonna do it to these ones I'm gonna create a curves adjustment layer and this is another way to dodge I'm gonna just like you see what I'm doing I brightened it a lot but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand on this one press ctrl and I so it's invisible now using a white brush wherever I paint it's gonna be visible again okay so I'm gonna paint here with white so it's gonna make it visible Uh, what's happening? Okay, it's making it visible actually. But it's too weak, I don't know why. Let's try to make it even stronger. Yeah, something like that. And now if I paint white, I'm fading out these areas. I'm gonna do the same to that one. There's adjustment layer, link it below. Make it like burnt out. Control I. Then using a white brush, I'm just gonna burn it out a little bit. If it's too bright, you can always like bring down this one a little bit. Yeah, because it doesn't need to be like super bright, it just needs to be to have no contrast. Yeah, so something like that is good. I'm decontrasting the edges. Yeah, and one more thing I can do is I can add a layer on top again and using my cloud brush I can hold alt sample from here and start covering some of the edges as if there is like fog somewhere here and there oh it's too strong so I'm gonna lower the opacity we don't want to lose the edge of the mountain let's go to that one again okay Let's do the same curves, pull it up strongly, make sure it's linked of course, and pull this one down, control I, then using a white brush, just do the edges, okay, and I'm gonna do the same for this one as well. But this one I'm gonna use to make it like much less effect. Control I and then using a white brush do the edges to fade them out. But actually this one still needs some dodging and burning, so I'm gonna take the dodge tool or the burn tool, hold alt to dodge. I'm gonna dodge actually the edges here burn some areas dodge some of the edges here and there and burn other areas okay uh, one more thing let's add the model uh, this is our model Okay, now I added it between the layers, so this is wrong. I'll press escape. Then I'm gonna stand on just like anywhere where there is no links. And I'm gonna re-add it again. I don't wanna like make a mistake with that. Okay, I'm just gonna select it. You don't have to make a like a fine selection. Something like that. I don't make a fine selection because it's gonna be like I'm gonna make the model really small so there will be no details so you don't need to waste time in like making a very good selection just something like that is good enough and then I'm gonna mask it and then I'm gonna rasterize the layer you need to press right click here to rasterize 
and then right click apply layer mask and I'm gonna put the model here let's erase this one for now and let's put our model I wanted something small so it makes these mountains look big because the smaller the model the bigger the environment this is our scale element something like that but the model is too dark so I'm gonna just like add a curves adjustment layer link it and of course fade it out something like that okay now let's start like trying to color grade things one thing I want to do actually this one is like it's annoying my eyes a lot so I'm gonna try something out I don't know if it will work or not but I'm gonna add a layer and link it and then I'm just gonna select this edge because there is some sort of an edge here you can see it you'll understand what I'm trying to do and after I made that selection I'm just gonna take sample some of this fog here and I'll take the cloud brush with a very low opacity I'm just gonna some add some fog here and there it's okay if it's like still strong because you can lower its opacity so now we created some sort of another layer between this one and that one okay now everything is done let's take the sky I'm gonna take the dodge tool and I'm just gonna dodge the middle part of the sky so this is like the source of light this is the brightest area in my photo because the brighter this one the more the model will look because I want the eyes to be attracted to that model okay <clears throat> now let's create a curves adjustment layer I'll, I'll, I'll start to try to color grade this image so curves adjustment layer I'll pull up the blacks pull down the shadows a little bit and pull the highlights strongly I want it to look like some sort of a dark moody photo so I can make like let's brighten the highlights a little bit something like that so you see the curves before and after it faded like everything out let's go to curves let's color a little bit I'll go to the blue channel I'll add some blue here uh, no I don't want to add yellow so I'll go to the red channel I'll add some cyan actually you see this is like cyan I don't know if I should add it in the shadows no let's add it in the highlights some cyan yes and then let's uh, go to gradient map and I'm gonna choose any one of these like Settle things the like the things that are not just like the one of these and then I'm gonna choose the colors let's give this one some sort of a blue this is in the shadows and this one in the highlights I'll give it also a blue but uh, like a, a bright blue and this one also let's take a very greenish bright blue and let's press ok let's lower the opacity of this one and let's change it to soft light so this is the before and after I'll reduce it even more something like 10% before and after just to color grade the photo a little bit let's take our model here I'm gonna alt and make a copy of it then control T hold control and just pull it down something like that then I'm gonna go to filter blur Gaussian blur blur it out a little bit then I'm gonna add a layer mask then I'm gonna take gradient make sure it's black color and then I'm gonna just pull something like that so I'll fade out the shadow a little bit and you can always reduce the opacity if it's too strong so now we have our model and we have everything let's try like playing around even more let's add a curves adjustment let's darken everything like that but then I'm gonna press uh, the gradient and then using black and on the like the radial circle the radial gradient I'm just gonna delete it from the parts in the middle like that so it's only affecting like the edges so it creates some sort of a vignette and we can also take the curves adjustment layer let's brighten everything up something like that 
Then I'm gonna press Ctrl and I so it's invisible. And then using a brush, just a normal brush with low opacity, I'm gonna paint white on white color. I'm gonna paint white here. So I brighten out the, the, this area in the middle so it attracts the eye even more. Increase the opacity and something like that. Okay, so now these two, what they did is they made the eyes look more. I'm gonna actually lower the opacity of this one. It's too strong, I guess. Okay, let's add final curves adjustment. Let's go to the blue. Let's add some yellow. And in the red, let's add some red. So now we added orange. And in the RGB, I'm gonna make the, it brighter, like everything is bright. And then I'm gonna press Control I. I want this to only be visible somewhere here in the middle. So we have some sort of a different color here in the middle that will attract the eye, which is orange, which is opposite to all the blue we have. So now we have everything is blue except this area in the middle. It's too strong. I'm just gonna lower the opacity a little bit. Okay, so now we have these three, what they did. They like attracted the eye to the area in the middle where the model is. I guess I'm done now, so I'm gonna hold Control, Alt, Shift, then press E. Now I merged everything into a new separate layer. I go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And now in the Camera Raw Filter, you see the, all the data in the image. I can actually increase the highlights a little bit and reduce the shadows a little bit. It won't affect the photo. I'll make it a little bit darker, the whole photo. And then in the effects module, I'm okay, let's first make the clarity. You can always like increase it to make everything more clear or reduce it. In this photo, I guess it's more soft and dreamy, so I'm going to reduce it. And then in the effects module, I'm going to add some sort of a vignette. Press OK. So now this is the like before the camera row and this is after the camera row. Uh, it looks like pretty good, I guess. I don't know if you can do anything else. I guess I like it this way. Okay, so that's it for today's tutorial.